Welcome to the podcast, Max. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. To start off, I promise this is hopefully kind of an easy question. What do you do? Okay, so I'm just currently wrapping up my honours in mathematics and statistics at the University of Western Australia. Uh, this year, my honours has involved uh, modelling wind measurements on Australia's northwest shelf. So oh. Australia's northwest shelf is a pretty economically significant region. It accounts for more than one third of the nation's oil and gas production. Um, and as you can imagine, the offshore environment can be pretty volatile. Um, and so basically, I've been looking at the forecasts of the wind measurements, if they have any biases, and how can we correct those biases and estimate the associated uncertainty. So that's kind of what I've been doing my honours on this year using statistics. Yeah, so the maths part of it does just come through with statistics. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. Do you find that maths as a subject, does it feel like it's opened you up to lots of opportunities or does it feel quite like specific? No, I absolutely feel like maths has opened me up to many, many opportunities. Everything in the world has maths at its core, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I see maths in everything I do. And even looking at the different projects that different honours students have been doing in my cohort, there are some who are looking at um, university results and maths anxiety, other people who are looking at sports, other people are looking at ocean density. So there's a huge range of uh, different avenues that you can go down studying yeah, wow. maths. So you are the newest... Rhodes Scholar, unless there's been a sneaky, sneaky one in the last few weeks. Uh, could you explain what that actually means? Okay, so basically a, a Rhodes Scholarship is a scholarship to go and study at the University of Oxford for two or three years. Um, so it's open to people who have completed an honours or a master's or even a PhD um, to go and study at Oxford. Um, basically, it's looking for people who... I think are uh, not only academically um, strong, but also have uh, been involved in either sports or arts mm. or performance or something like that, and also um, committed to the community. So looking through the bios of um, the people who have been selected, it's pretty inspiring to see all the, the amazing things that they have done in addition to their studies. And I think that's kind of what the selection panel look for. Yeah. Did it feel, was it a surprise to win? Or did you think, yeah, I've got this? No, absolutely. It was a huge <laughs> surprise. Um, during the application process, I was kind of in the headset, the headspace that it would be amazing if I got it but the, the likelihood that it was that I probably wouldn't be so I just tried to enjoy it and get the most out of the time with the selection panel and mm. just try to treat it like interesting conversations that I was having with them um, so yeah a huge surprise um, even looking through the bios of the other people who've been selected this year from other states That'd I find crazy. it really in qu quite intimidating and I almost feel like a bit of a fraud no, being up there no, no, um, no. So it's a, a very cool group to be a part of, but definitely surprising. Yeah. Having read a little bit of a media release about you, Max, I do know that you have a lot of kind of out of uni commitments. Could you walk us through a few of those? Yeah, absolutely. So my first one is probably Surf Club. So I'm a member of the City of Perth Surf Life Saving Club, which is the surf club down at City Beach. Um, I'm a patrol captain there, so that's voluntary patrols over the summer. Um, and then also through that, I do Surf Ironman. So Surf Ironman, it's kind of like a triathlon, but like a surf, surf version. So there's Whoa. swimming, like board paddling, like the boards they paddle on Bondi Rescue kind of. <laughs> and then also <laughs> ski paddling, which is um, kind of like kayaking, but on a surf ski. Mm -hmm. um, and the training for that's pretty intense. I Tr I swim um, five mornings a week and then I'm at the beach pretty much every afternoon training wow. as well. So it's normally 11 or 12 sessions a week. So it's quite intense and sometimes that can be hard to balance around uni. Um, but I also find it really good because when I need a break from my uni work, there's mm. nothing better than going out in the waves and getting absolutely dumped. It's a pretty good um, refresher and it takes your mind off things. Yeah, that's true. So I really love that. 
And then the other kind of main commitment that I have is that I'm involved in an organisation called Ignite Mentoring. So it's an organisation that works with students from lower socioeconomic schools and we basically run um, mentoring programs and I've been a mentor and coordinator there for the last like three and a half years yeah. um, and the last couple of years I've also been on the executive. So kind of that's the main club that I've been involved in at uni. So it's really great. Socially, I've met some awesome people through it. Um, I've obviously got to have an impact on the students, which I've really loved. And also I've developed a lot of skills through being involved, I'd say. Let's jump across to some of our questionable questions okay. from the Particle team. Okay. Will you be our next Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely not, I don't think. I don't think politics is something that hugely appeals to me. Um, uh, I'd definitely say that maths and stat is, stats is where my head's at now yeah. and where I want to be in yeah. the near future. As I said, I don't think that far ahead, but I definitely don't think politics is my game. <laughs> if we we're going to take a guess, we'd say probably not. You've competed in some quite big competitions uh, for your, uh, I guess we'll call them, is it like almost like an Ironman competition? Yeah. What is the hardest section to do? It's different for everybody. Um, for me, the hardest part is the board, probably. Mm. I'm not particularly strong in a board and I can find it quite challenging. Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, or in 2018, I competed in the Cool and Gutter Gold, wow. which is like quite a long event. It's held on the Gold Coast. Um, and so it starts off with a long ski paddle and then a run. So it's a 42K event. Oh. It took about a four and a half hours um, for me to finish. Oh, that's such a long time. And the board was quite near the end and I was paddling along the board and I had this Coke bottle strapped to the front of the board so that I could take sips on it through mm. a straw while I was paddling. And I'd try to take sips through it and I'd get water up my nose and I couldn't oh. breathe when I was trying to drink from it. So I was just paddling on this board in the middle of the ocean <laughs> next to absolutely nowhere, nobody. And I think I had a little cry during yeah. that board paddle all out there on my own, trying to drink but not being able to. It was just horrific. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say the board is yeah. the hardest part for me. Alternatively, what is your favourite section? Um, my favourite section is probably the swim. Yeah. Just because it's my strongest, I yeah. think. Um, I... Yeah, I grew up swimming, so it's probably where I'm most comfortable. Keeping in mind that you said you weren't someone who creates long-term plans, mm -hmm. do you know what you're hoping to get out of the DFIL? Yeah, so what I'm really interested in is how we can use statistics or data analysis or statistical modelling to kind of solve real-world problems. One of them that I'd really like to look at is um, disaster response and recovery. Um, so we've seen a lot of examples of how we can use statistical modelling in response to natural disasters. So, for example, in during the natural uh, during the bushfires earlier this year, CSIRO developed some models that allowed us to predict the spread of the bushfires based on kind of vegetation, terrain, uh, climate, weather forecast, all that sort of thing to mm. kind of predict where the fires were going to go so that they could then plan their responses. Um, something that's happened at the University of Oxford kind of recently or over the last few years, um, they've been looking at machine learning and how we can use that. So one example is that um, during Hurricane Dorian, um, they had satellite images of before and after the disaster took place. And so basically they crowdsourced people to compare the images and, and identify where the oh. biggest impact would be. And then they'd use machine learning so the computers could Interpret learn from the, the people to yeah. interpret and see where the impact had occurred. So that over time it got faster and faster as the computers learned how to wow. do that. And then they used that to generate heat maps and of where the most responses needed and then use that for governments and also response agencies. So I think yeah. that sort of thing about how we can use data and statistical modelling in those real world scenarios, I think that'd be something that I'd love to be a part of. What are some misconceptions of being someone who studies maths? What do people say? If you're, like you said, yeah. if you're like, I don't know, out of a club, let's say out of a club, <laughs> say, if someone says, hey, what do you do? And you're like, mm, I study maths. What, yeah. what are your misconceptions you come up against? Absolutely. When I say I study maths, I get one of two responses. So the first response is, oh, I hated maths in school, mm -hmm. which I get all the time. 
Um, and then the second response is, oh, what are you going to do with a maths degree? Oh, um, wow. They re- yeah. And I think a that's lot. a very common <laughs> question because if you study law, then you're going to become a lawyer. If you mm-hmm. study medicine, you're going to mm-hmm. become a doctor. If you study engineering, you're going to become an engineer. Maths is not really like that. There's, I don't know if there's really such thing as a mathematician yeah. other than if you're in research. Um, I, I think maths opens doors to a huge range of careers. Um, and so it's not as simple as you do a maths degree, you become this. And so I find it quite hard to answer that question. But I think it's definitely a misconception that uh, having a maths degree is unemployable yeah. or not going to get you anywhere. Because yeah. I think it, the problem-solving skills and the logical reasoning are relevant to absolutely everything. Mm.